In this episode, Robert talks to Micah Solomon. Micah is a customer service consultant, customer service turnaround expert, keynote speaker, trainer, best-selling author of five books, and a senior contributor to Forbes. Hello and welcome to the Guide to Talks today. Absolutely fantastic today. I'm delighted to have as my guest, Micah Solomon. Hi there, Micah. Hello, Mr. Craven. Hi there. So let's just give the intro, the proper intro, intro that Mr. Solomon deserves because it, it's worthwhile. I've been really excited to, to have you on board. Today. So Micah is one of the world's leading authorities and hands-on consultants specializing exclusively and customer service, company culture, customer experience. Particularly relevant for me because way back in 2009, I wrote a book called Customer is King, based a lot on what I'd heard and read from, from this man here. So he's been oh. named Financial Post, the new guru of customer service excellence, specializing in creating five-star customer service with an eye towards bottom line results. Author, consultant, keynote speaker, Contributor to Forbes, Inc. has reviews from all the top names. Uh, hello and big welcome to you, sir. Wow, thank you. I'm blushing. Well, you don't need to blush. So tell us, how, how, I mean, how would you describe yourself? If, rather than the, the formal words, how, how would you describe yourself? What's your, what's your sort of pitch to about yourself? Well, I'm about five foot ten. I wear glasses. I have headphones on right now, but you can see that, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, then the rest of it is... I am a customer service turnaround expert, which means I'll come to your company and help you either literally, well, not literally, but figuratively turn everything around, or uh, if all that's needed is a refresh, I'll refresh it as well. And this means I might start by mystery shopping your company, uh, simulated a client as best as I can, talking with you about what the pain points are, talking with some of your customers, and then, We'll strive to improve everything from communications to processes. That was, I always, that was for my Canadian names. Uh, can, Canadian friends, for the rest of you, I will translate. That was processes. <laughs> and, uh, and it can be very uh, impressive results. I will tell you, though, that the people who hire me tend to already be doing pretty well. They already know the value of an exceptional customer experience, and they just want to make it more exceptional. It's amazing all the uh, infamous companies that, have terrible customer service that don't call me and I'm like, and I think that's kind of telling. It's very interesting. So, so it must be one of those things that, that, that never leaves you alone because you can't walk into a super, this is where we have the language issues, a supermarket, a gas station. You can't go to Amazon. Petrol. petrol yeah. Without, without feeling or out measuring whatever it is that you do. I mean, the first of my first business was, um, uh, running a, a cafe and a restaurant. I spent years, even after I'd run it, sort of picking up cups and looking at where they're made and looking under Good the for rooms. You. So presumably, that's, you're, you're, you're like that. You're never, you're never off duty because you're always aware wherever you go about how you're being treated by other people. Well, my, uh, I tr try to get better about it. My new uh, mantra is that I won't complain unless they're paying me to. Uh, <laughs> But this is how I was born. I actually, I've always been extremely particular, at least in some things. Uh, I, I found this note that was written to my parents uh, at summer camp. Uh, at the end of the summer, it was very good customer service. The counselors understand their customer are really the parents. So they'd written this note to my parents like they did to all the kids. But you had to read, well, not really even between the lines, but it said, we have enjoyed the rigorous pleasure of Micah's company. Uh, but it will be something of a relief in the off season to not get all these great suggestions about how the whistle is out of tune on the waterfront and the oranges, uh, that orange juice doesn't quite pair with the sloppy joes and so forth. So we are somewhat relieved to return him to your uh, capable hands, Mr. and Mrs. Solomon. Brilliant. Because the thing is, once you start, I mean, it's, that, that is what actually goes on. You go into a hotel room, you're quite happy. They said to you, turn left, turn right, go to the put the key in, you open the door, and then, and then it's kind of when you see the first pubic hair on the toilet seat or whatever it is, you suddenly go, oh, and another thing, look at the dust, and another thing, the shower's not clean, and another thing. It's kind of like everything's okay until suddenly you see something, well, for me, until you see something <laughs> wrong. And you then, get turned off at the first one. You don't have to wait for the third. 
Yeah, yeah. That's what that, that Quentin, my father always quoted Quentin Crisp, uh, who said, if you go into a restaurant and you order a dry martini and it comes sweet, that's the time to leave. <laughs> and uh, I kind of get what he's saying because they're never going to, they're never going to rescue it if, if they've made a really fundamental mess up. Anyhow, let's stay vaguely to a script. How did, how did you get to doing Oh, I think we're way off already, Robert. Dude, I like that. But how did you, how did you get to 2020? How did you get to, to doing this? I mean, all the, of all the things you could have been doing, you end up doing customer service. And, 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 there's a, 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 and another thing is, surely everyone knows about this stuff. Surely there, there should be no need for you to be running around. Thanks. Thanks a whole lot. <laughs> well, there's two story. There's two completely true stories to how I got to doing what I the, what I'm doing. And the one I just told you, I was born particular, and I finally uh, found a way to monetize that. But the other story is that I built my own manufacturing company, and it was a big well in our small market. It was a big success. When I sold it, uh, I started to think about what had made us beyond being a commodity and the answer was always the customer experience that we provided so I started to write a book about that and I thought well you know I have all these examples from a business to business and such but uh you know everybody wants everyone wants to be the Ritz Carlton of widgets nobody wants to be the Bank of America of hospitality right yep. so I have I he's now a colleague but at that time he was a friend uh who had created m many of the wonderful systems at the Ritz Carlton. So I called him and I said, Hey, let's write a book together. And he said, nah, I'm planning to write my own book. So sorry. So I called him again six months later and I said, Hey, how's your book coming? And he said, Oh, you know, I haven't done anything, but I still think this is how deluded he was. He said, I still think I'm going to find a week in the Bahamas and write it. So I was like, okay, good luck with that. 30 minutes later, he called me back sort of You could hear how sheepish he was on the phone. And he said, my wife overheard that last phone call and she said, you have to write this book with Micah because you're clearly never going to get around to it on your own. So we wrote this book. It was called Exceptional Service, Exceptional Profit. And it's still, it's, it was a bestseller. It's still a perennial. And uh, people started asking me to consult and uh, transform their companies. And that's how it started. And, and the Ritz Carlton story is, is a remarkable story and it gets quoted back at you and um, back at me endlessly and I quoted at people because and I worked with Ritz Carlton in in Jamaica and I also worked with Sandals in Jamaica oh, okay. probably about 10 years ago and and they are stunning organizations I mean they are they're, they're stunning as a guest and they're stunning when you get sort of under the skin of how they operate they're just amazing It's a pretty good analogy to your listeners because they're selling something that they almost have to describe to their customers. And a uh, great hotel is similar. Their room's not going to be any more rectangular. You know, their toilet's not going to flush any uh, with a more melodious sound than the guy down the street. But they infuse that with uh, things that make customers not only enjoy it, but spread the story for them. Yeah, and I think that, uh, and I, and I, and I certainly, f when when you get really good service, and it doesn't matter whether that where that good service comes, when someone appears to have engaged you as an individual, when someone seems to have gone the extra mile, when someone seems to have have just just spent some time with you, so you're not a number, that that makes a remarkable difference. And that happens, it happens more in small businesses than big businesses, but, but just because it's difficult to do doesn't mean that larger businesses shouldn't be able to do it. No, and a lot of times, not always, but a lot of times that's when uh, things start to fall apart and people call me is uh, they had a great, uh, or at least a very good relationship with their clients when they were small, and then it feels like it's fallen off. So I will, at the beginning of my book, uh, ignore your customers and they'll go away. I describe that. I say that I uh, slide down the guru pole, which is like the bat pole, but it's for mm -hmm. consultants. And I rush when I hear that call. And very often, this is exactly what I find, Robert, is that uh, 
at the beginning, they were signing their thank you notes. They were uh, not hiding in the back. They were answering calls more quickly. And then they grew and they started to think, and this is such a mistake we all make, that uh, there was an infinite supply of customers. Well, there isn't. The, the reality is I, I hesitate to even use the word customers in the plural. I think you should only be thinking about the customer in front of you right now. And if you lose that customer, they are gone, barring some miracle, they're gone forever, right? They're gone forever. And if, if you're okay with doing that, uh, I mean, one of the great things about being small is you can fire a customer once in a while, but by and large, you don't want to let that be happening willy nilly as you grow. Okay. So still going to ask the question, why customer service? Uh -oh. Am I, am I, am I dancing around a question you want to no, answer? I, no, I, I'm loving it. I'm like, I'd much rather have a conversation like this than, 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 than being rigid, but I, I, I'm still curious. So we were writing books 10, 15 years ago about customer service. It, they haven't got it somehow or, 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 or they, they don't believe they need it. I, I mean, I can understand, I can understand a, an airport hotel where it's always full. And, and they treat you like rubbish and they charge you, you sleep for four hours and you get on your plane. You know, I can kind of, I don't, I don't accept it. I can kind of get how they can treat customers badly, but I'm, I'm constantly amazed that, that customer service is not the number one item on the agenda of every board. It's not the number one thing that banks and uh, finances and investors look at. So, well, yeah. Well, you're, I mean, you're exactly right. Anyone who thinks that great customer service is not important or even, and I hear this, that it's too expensive. I mean, they have to be, uh, what's British for crappy? Crappy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they have to be crappy at, ma at math because the <laughs> best number that I've seen is the 97% of customers make buying decisions based on word of mouth. 97%. So at first I thought, wow, that's a big number. Oh, I'm sorry. That's right. 93%. 93%. So at first I thought, wow, that's a big number. And then I thought, well, who are these stubborn 7% who don't listen to word of mouth? Who are they? And I thought, well, you know what? I know who it is. It's my uncle. It's my uncle. He's a stubborn, fantastic guy, but he makes decisions on his own. Maybe he'll read consumer reports, but he decides on his own. But everyone else, the 93% are going to be are gonna decide based on their customer experience, based on the customer experience of the people they listen to online, based on the customer experience they read about in The Customer is King, or that's yeah. Robert's book, or ignore your customers and they'll go away, that's mine. Or, uh, you know, and this is true of all generations. This is true of all generations. Uh, we think of the Gen Y and the Gen Z as being the only people who do this social stuff, but it's totally not true. There's actually a group on Facebook called my life's officially over. My parents have joined Facebook. So it's all of us now, right? <laughs> so, so, so you must have, you must have um, seen some great customer service disasters. You must have seen <laughs> some great organizations getting their clients wrong. Can you give us some examples of some really great mistakes you've seen? <laughs> so um, in the book, in my, in my book, I don't mention any by name. Mm. I mention the good stories by name. Okay. Uh, but I'm going to confess to a disaster that happened at one of my companies. Is that okay? Yeah, go for it. I could name my own name. So this was early on. And uh, technology is very important in, in providing great customer service these days and getting the technology right. We can talk a little bit about that in a moment if you want. But uh, sometimes the technology can kill you as well. This is an example of that. So one of my companies, um, we had a very particular customer, very particular. I'll call him Michael because that's his name. And because uh, he gave me permission to tell the story. So Michael is very, very particular. And I always thought that was fine. But one of our younger employees, it rubbed her the wrong way. And we were using, it was, it was dynamic CRM. And we had typed into it. But it was pre-CRM at that point. So um, she had typed into this for Michael's record. She typed in a seven-letter word. 
seven letter word, seven letters um, to describe him. Well, that was okay. No, I mean, not best practice, but that was okay as long as everything was offline. Then one night, our brilliant IT department uh, finally came up with their new pet project and they put it online, which is a my account pro product where you could check your account 24 seven. So that happened. Michael saw this seven letter uh, adjective that described him, or maybe it was a noun. He's an seven letter word. He called me, thank God he's a nice guy. He called me and he said, Micah, I think you owe me a really nice dinner. <laughs> 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 and thank goodness he had a sense of humor. He said, I know some, I strike people, some, some people that way. And in fact, I, I said he was in, in Maine and I said, what's the best, um, what's the absolute main, uh, what's the absolute best restaurant in your area? And there is an incredible um, five-star Relay and Chateau restaurant there, the White Barn Inn. So our little, our little learning, quick learning curve cost me like three, four hundred dollars, but it's totally worth it for the store. Yeah. And we're still friends. <laughs> well, that's, 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 that's even better. So, so if you just flip that round, what are the what are the what do you think the secrets are? What do you think you know? If we're going to talk about exceptional, because it's because it's 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 quite. Well, don't do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's a real a real. But when you do that, that's one of the secrets is to have a uh, when that's one of the secrets is to have a um, approach ready for customer service recovery because this stuff's going to happen. I mean, that one was avoidable, but these stuff, this stuff's going to happen. And sometimes it happens from employees being empowered. I mean, we say they're going to be empowered, but it's not like they're empowered till they mess up and you fire them. They're mm -hmm. empowered until they do something great, and they're also going to make mistakes. I mean, they're going to make mistakes. So you need to be ready uh, to deal with that. And one of the secrets of dealing with it is apologizing. And a lot of us, especially those of us who've built our own businesses, we bristle rather than apologize. I mean, if you're working for the man, you don't mind apologizing on behalf of them, perhaps. But if you're working on top of on on yourself, the first thing is gonna you're gonna think is, you know, you don't really understand the situation. You yeah. it, rather than oh, I'm so you know, I'm so sorry. By the way, if you're gonna give an apology, give a real one. Here's a good fake apology you should never use. I'm sorry if you feel that way. <laughs> it does very much say. It's your problem that you feel like you've got a problem. <laughs> but, but it is. But you find when you when you when you're complaining, and I do 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 a fair amount of complaining. <laughs> it's like I would never have guessed. All you've got to all you've got to do all you've got to do is say you're sorry. All you've got to do is you say say I'm really really sorry. What can I do to put it right? And you say, well, exactly. I, I want my money back. And then they say, and what else can we do for you? And you go, um, I'd like a letter from the managing director. And what else can we do for you? Um, uh, nothing. It's okay. I'll go now. <laughs> but they, but they so rarely do that. It's, it's normally like, well, well, we don't understand why it happened. It's not down in our system that that you that you that you had a, a ticket for the front row. He said, well, you know, when I gave you a hundred dollars for the front row seat, you told me it was a front row seat, and it's like, well, that's not not in the system. So, 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 so is it my fault? Of course. And and I think that. There's a couple of things that would lined in with that is that in this world where everyone emails, so we we got as a we we got fired as a client by by an agent oh, no. who worked for us before we'd even got in. It's really interesting, and actually they didn't have one. They didn't have to fire us, and secondly, we were really hacked off. But if they'd have picked up the phone and said, actually, we've been thinking about what you want and what you need, and we think that uh, you need a smaller, cheaper agency than us who can give you what you want because we're not we're not you know we're a little bit too five star and i think a three star will get you what you want and here's a recommendation of who you go to then i would still sing their praises but they actually sent us an email saying for the following reasons we feel we feel that uh, you're not appropriate oh, okay. you don't understand this you don't do this it's like and it's like hang on i'm the customer and i was willing to give you my cash and clearly clearly you're, you're you, you don't think that's right you're superior so it for me it's a lot about the how we do stuff and in this world where we think we can email people it's kind of not good enough pick up the bloody phone you know in in a world where we think that that the words are enough you know, like almost like the features it's not what you say it's 
how you say it and and it's and, and and where you have really good examples where you feel really good there's a there's a whole process you know so you arrive at the hotels they don't have to take your credit card details they've already got them they don't have to take your passport details they've already got them they don't but for some reason hotels still insist on on making you queue up you know, and then when you get to the front of the queue, then they say, just one minute, and then they look for your room. They don't have to do that. They can take you to the room straight away and say, uh, tomorrow morning when you're relaxed, we'll come and just make sure we've got the right passport number, blah, 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 blah. Excellent. That's a good approach. And, 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 and it's their, if their system is working properly in favor of customer service, putting the customer first, thinking things through the customer journey, that's fine. But I think too many businesses think about what's convenient for them uh, as opposed to what's convenient for me. And whether that's you know, what digital agencies call user experience, which is when you go to a website, you're looking for some basic stuff. Mm -hmm. Or whether you go when you go into a into a hotel and 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 that usual thing when they say you're room, you're in room four six three on the second floor and you go to the second floor and there's no numbers on the wall or it says four six one four sixty to four sixty two and then four six where's my room where's my room why am I feeling so stupid why are they doing this to me like it's just not necessary <laughs> now, come on give me some give me some great examples of of excellent customer experience give me some examples well let's back up for a second so the it's not really a flip side of this but something to be aware of with today's customers is that it's not always the time for the personal touch it's not always the time for the wow customer experience and you also need to be reading when your customers are feeling like they're all business feeling like they're in a hurry and, and sometimes they do yeah. just want they, they do just want. so i think we're saying the same thing but when you do have that moment where you have that touch point make it extraordinary uh so i mean to give you an example of some good customer service so zappos is a um they're an e-commerce company so it seems like the last place you would find one of these examples but their theory is that fewer than five percent of their sales are made on the phone and that's got to be fewer than 0.05%. It's got to be a very, very, very tiny number. But they also theorize that every customer is going to call them once in the course of their relationship. And usually it's going to be when something's gone wrong or they really need something. So they want to make that call exceptional. And then once you've had that exceptional call, you'll feel bonded and you'll probably go back to your ordering of uh, ordering online, but you'll be singing their praises and you'll feel like you have a uh, you have a friend at Zappos, and it's the same. Uh, it's the same principle that is the reason we still have bank branches. If you're wondering why we still have bank branches, it's because I know it's probably for its a habit, but it's also studies that show that in uh, retail banking and financial services, if you just have that one reassuring in-person interaction, then every time you are working with them electronically you feel like you're talking to Robert rather than to a faceless algorithm or whatever it is. So what does Zappos do? Well, Zappos is famous, and this is here where I diverge from the typical Zappos story. So Zappos is famous for these completely over the top wow stories, and some of them are a little unrealistic. So let me tell you a, a story of realistic wow at Zappos that any of us can emulate. This is what I call everyday wow, and it doesn't cost much more. I won't say it doesn't cost any more. You have to be hiring good people. You need to be training them right, or if it's yourself, you need to be on your best. And, uh, and you probably need to allocate for a little more time on the phone than maybe some efficiency expert told you. But if you do all that, then you're golden. So I'm at the Zappos, they call it the customer loyalty team. It's what the rest of us would call a contact center. And this older woman calls in and uh, Madison, who I'd say is in her 20s or 30s, answers the phone and they suddenly have this cross-generational bonding experience. Well, what happens? This older woman is really frustrated because she used the website and managed to purchase some dressy shoes for this upcoming wedding for one of her younger relatives, her, I forget if it's her niece or her granddaughter. It's, it's by the way, in the book, if you want to fact check me. And, uh, and so she, so, but, and she did get them, but they were really uncomfortable. Uh, she has narrow feet, there's a limited selection. So Madison says, 
oh, Mrs. Whatever her name is. Um, or she might have used her first name, but with older people, I, th I think she used her, her last name. Mrs. Whatever it is. Um, narrows are the worst. I have an aunt with narrow feet. And I swear, every second or third phone call I have her, it's about the miseries of being born with narrow feet. Oh, it's the worst. And, and so they become best friends immediately. And the woman calms down and they do some co-surfing together, some uh, co-surfing to find shoes that both look you know, classy enough for the wedding and also promise at least to make the day be a, not a torture fest. That's the end of the story, but that's what I call everyday wow. Yeah, well, I, I think, and I think that the, the 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 thing that disappoints me is that we are so regularly, so regularly underwhelmed. You know, yeah. you know, you get the, the the taxi driver to the train station when you buy the train ticket, when you get on the train, when you get off the train. You just don't, you know, it's like people don't want to be alive you know it's like it's like and 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 they don't need to be like that they they could they could equally be hi there how are you how's the day what's going on hope you have fun you're going up to london oh that's neat what are you doing in london that's fun you know not like I mean, nobody wants a new york cab driver but you know what i mean there's a kind of a there's a kind of a a way of doing stuff where people could be interested where they could lean in rather than lean out and and i'm constantly amazed at how often how often people lean out because it does Ooh. so so is there i mean is it just common sense or is there a secret or is it systems and processes what is it that what is the secret source of customer service the secret sauce is systems and smiles <laughs> <laughs> and smiles <laughs> so uh with uh, with that one or the other uh it's it's not enough if if everything's always falling apart and you, you don't deliver on time and your work is shoddy that's never gonna fly um but if you deliver a tip-top work and you do it uh without a, a pause uh, making the whole po interaction positive that's not going to fly either so that is that is the alliterative secret there robert systems and smiles and uh let me just uh exercise a bit of a bit, a bit of my brain five star service like ritz carlton incredibly expensive to run uh, that's true one star service uh, like uh, Formula Twenty One with the Accor Group, or or but those that's those small rooms where you go and you go out, don't get even get breakfast. Um, where where's the profit? Is the profit in five star service? Is the profit in one star service? Is the, is the profit in quality service? I mean, is there a correlation in your mind between between profitability and customer service? What's how, where's where are you sitting on that? Well, I think the situation is different for, for your clients, for, for your listeners is a little different uh, because you're already providing something uh, that we, dis we discussed that it's a hard thing to prove one way or the other. And in that situation, adding the service will always increase the profitability. The only time it might not is if you have, or might not be necessary, let's say, is if you have an absolutely unassailable advantage. If you are the only gas station uh, and you're and before before you enter death valley or something like that right uh you know so so and there are situations like that where you have an incredible um e efficiency advantage or an incredible convenience advantage but if you don't if you are uh in spite of your parents telling you you're the best best kid ever i which i tell my kids all the time uh and they're they're like whatever dad uh and uh, uh, the, the uh, well, we probably are to some extent replaceable. I mean, there's this old joke. Uh, you know, so, someone um, comes to New York and the old crusty, I don't know, theatrical agent or something says, so you think you're one in a million. Kid, there's eight guys just like you here. 
<laughs> so right. So uh, because there's eight, you get the joke. Uh, okay, I don't know how to explain it. Okay, good. Thank God. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, how many people are in London right now? Uh, there's about eight, ten million. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you think you're one in a million? Uh, well, that's great, but there's might be ten others just like yeah. you. So, so if there are, you know, nine to ten others like you, uh, the extra service touches are a great way to increase your profitability. Now, why does it increase profitability? Number one, you get more customers. Let's back up. Number one, you'll keep your customers. Let's say you got them already. Number two. They will be more forgiving of, believe it or not, of price increases. They'll be more forgiving when you have little fumbles, foibles. They will tell their friends. Uh, it's it's quite a uh, it's it's quite a civilized way to improve the bottom line, and it's a multifaceted way to improve the bottom line. So, why? Doesn't everyone do it? Well, more people do it than you realize. One of the things that I, I get a lot is, oh, you're in customer service. Customer service is a dying art. I hear that a lot maybe from older people. Mm -hmm. Customer service is a dying art. Well, I don't think that's exactly true. I think customer expectations, including yours and mine, have risen so quickly that companies are having trouble keeping up. Go back, I don't know, 10 years, online inventory was never expected to be accurate, right? It only became real time. That only became the expectation with Amazon. Uh, before that, you could take people's credit card for something that was totally not in stock and it wasn't clear that it wasn't in stock and that was fine. I mean, I don't think anyone liked it, but you weren't the only person, the only company. You weren't the only company uh, making that uncustomer centric decision. Uh, I think timetables have improved. I th think customer service employees are probably about as friendly as they were before. And yet we complain more and more because we do have, I think, some better examples, probably at every price point, probably at every price point. So, so does that so does that mean that it's it's a lot about managing expectations? So don't tell people they're going to get a five star service and it'll be delivered by close of play tomorrow, if you know it's not going to be. Is it the old thing about under promise over deliver? Is it is it the same thing about you know, staying in contact with people about letting them know what's going on and that again I'm, I'm going to argue that the whole email website. Uh, dealing with a system rather than a, pe a person creates an expectation because everyone says we can do this in 24 hours. You know, uh, Amazon certainly in, in, in Europe was promising 24 hour delivery and then 12 hour delivery. And now they don't really quite, and, and for a long time, they used to just give you your money back if they didn't deliver on time. And now it's kind of, it's in the next, within the next day or so, you know, even even with Amazon Prime claims to always be there by nine o'clock the next morning. Sometimes, sometimes. So there's something about how you manage people's expectations. Um, and if you over promise, you, 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 you're going to get punished for it, ultimately. Well, that's true. I think uh, I the issues of time are very, very important to clarify them. You don't want your customers falling off uh, what I call the cliff of dissatisfaction. Hmm. So that is when they lose faith that you're going to be able to do things on time for them. And this is an internal metric from Starbucks, which they don't share what the number of minutes is. But in every market, there's a number of minutes after which customers are frustrated with how long it's taking. And if that happens once in a while, they come out, they give you samples of things, they make sure the merchandising in their stores is interesting. I mean, not very many people are buying those $400 uh, espresso makers, but it gives you some eye candy to look at while you're in line. And if they are consistently falling down, they're consistently disappointing their customers in terms of time, at least here in Seattle, what they do, it's, it, it, uh, it drives their real estate acquisition, right? They build another Starbucks on the next corner uh, 
the next corner or half a block over is where uh is where they build their next shop but every industry has this cliff of dissatisfaction yeah. and the problem is you can't just compare yourself to your competitors i quote in the book i believe it's this uh, i quote in the book a friend of mine who ordered some custom furniture i mean not like custom not like built by a cabinet maker but you know kind of custom yeah. you know semi semi custom and he was told it would be 12 weeks and he said 12 weeks he wasn't trying to be a jerk. He had just literally never heard of anything that took 12 weeks. Well, it turned out that was the norm. And I'm not talking real, you know, someone gets out their sander and such. I mean, mm. custom in this case just means oh. a different configuration. He just, he wasn't trying to be a jerk. He had never heard of anything taking 12 weeks in our era. Um, and the problem is that that industry, at least at that time, thought their competition was other similar businesses they didn't realize their competition was ikea where you take it home and uh, put it together yourself are there dogs like that too? oh those are called akitas right you, i never want to get akita because i was afraid i'd have to put it together at home but sorry i'll be here the whole interview try the veal <laughs> <laughs> but I've, i did the reverse thing so i did uh, uh, i did a piece of work at warwick castle number two most visited tourist site in the uk oh wow and uh they discovered that the the if they if they put a sign up saying 45 minute queue from here uh -huh. Uh -huh. the longer they put the, that sign up like 55 minutes the more people uh -huh. would queue so <laughs> they were trying to they, what they were trying to do was they were trying to tell people don't queue here because it's going to take too long and of course you queue for 45 minutes you go down the stairs and it's a dark damp kind of cellar really with a few sort of metal objects and, and, and a story saying that someone got hung, hung or s strung up there and that's it. But, but the, the longer they said that the, the queue and the wait was going to be, the more people would actually join the queue. There's almost like a, a, a fear of missing out going on. So I think the, 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 the psychology of people is, 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 is really fascinating. So that is rare. Let's just say that principle. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I Isn't going to work for everyone, but that's very interesting. But, but the, but the, but the, the, the high quality names in in customer service, uh, Ritz Carlton, Zappos, Virgin, and so on and so forth. Those, that reputation, uh, hasn't hasn't just happened i mean I, I love our cleaning lady comes up to me and says to me i'm going to buy a pension i go oh fantastic who are you, who are you buying the pension with and she says oh i'm going to buy a pension with virgin with virgin finance i go oh well, that's fantastic why is that and she goes oh it's that that nice richard branson man now there's so much going that's on great, in that's that's great, there's great. so much going on in that story about her feeling that virgin Branson, the Virgin Promise, the Branson personality, the, the, the fact that she feels safe and she wouldn't go to any of the other 132 suppliers that would all be banging on her door demanding money. There is something going on uh, about, about Virgin Zappos, Ritz Carlton, and a thousand other people. Um, so so why, why is it that they stand out? Is it, is it that they... Is it they stand out because they do exceptional customer service? Is it they stand out because they've designed it in? Is it what? Is it because they're profitable so they can afford to do customer service? Is it they're just young-minded? Is it that they're? What is it that's going on there? Well, that's a great story, and I spent some time with uh, with Richard Branson that I discussed in the book. We uh, we were having breakfast, and some of these themes came out. Uh, let me tell you some of the things you can do to be more Richard Branson-y, if you want. Uh, to be more Richard Branson, great. <laughs> I mean, you've got one of the things right already. You're not wearing the tie. Yeah. You're not wearing a tie. He's anti-tie. Uh, so what we were talking about was the service on his Virgin Atlantic Airlines, the yeah. international, his international airline. And he was not saying that his service is better or worse than the... Middle Eastern and Asian airlines, because some of those are spectacular. Mm -hmm. However, he wants it to be different. And so we were talking together, well, how should we describe the difference? And um, he said, well, what was that? What was that old movie? And uh, 
we came up with this term Stepford customer service. <laughs> so that's, that's what he wants to avoid. He doesn't want every one of his flight attendants, first of all, to have to be female, second, to have the same haircut, be the same age and so forth. That's, they, those guys succeed with that style of service, but that's not what he was looking for. He wants them to bring more of their personality to work. So most customers today don't like Stepford service anymore. I mean, they like it better than no service, but they're looking for something that feels a little more authentic. And what I call in the book, I call peer on peer. It's no longer like uh, the service that you see uh, in historical recreations of Buckingham Palace, where the, uh, right, and the arm, the hand behind the arm, uh, I mean, the hand behind your back and, uh, you know, and you're being very servile though, of course, with those dramas, we know that much, much of that servility is actually passive aggressive, but uh, because they do actually think they're superior to the royal family, they may be right. But uh, that's not the style of service that people are looking for at any price point these days, uh, unless it's a historical recreation. I quote some, uh, I, I quote Richard Branson saying that he, uh, he doesn't want that. I also quote a fantastic three Michelin star restaurateur here in the state saying that because his place is very fancy and price points very high, he gets these promising uh, young people who want to work in his restaurant. He hires them. Then the first day they're on the job, they start prancing around uh, with the towel over the arm. And he's like, what, what terrible movie from the fifties did you see? He says, I don't want, and this is the, this, here's the money quote. I don't want the imitation of a waiter. I want the real thing. <laughs> And we're talking about someone who's charging without alcohol for two yeah. teetotalers. It's probably going to cost them five hundred dollars, you know, four hundred pounds or whatever that translates to be. Cool, very nice, very nice. I'm going to. Th- have you got five minutes before we disappear? I've got four and a half. No kidding. I'm here. You know, there's not a lot going on right now. It already. I don't know. I don't. Cool. Yeah. Okay, fine. So I'm going to throw some quick fire questions at you. One one word answer because it always interesting. Okay. So what's one your favorite? Word. Well, it might be five words, but not many. What's your favorite act? What's your favorite movie? <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> Witness. Okay. Okay, good. Good, good. I'd go for Pulp Fiction myself. That's uh, another one, but it was two words. Yeah, yeah, Pulp Fiction. Uh, favorite album? Favorite music album? Oh, this is, can we enter controversial? Uh... Welcome Interstate Managers by uh, Fountains of Wayne. Shoot Out the Lights by Richard and Linda Thompson. All right, yeah, that's better, yeah. Okay. Rumor and Sigh by Richard Thompson. <laughs> okay. Wood, Woodface by Crowded House. <laughs> okay, fine. Cool. Uh, and so what's, what's the, the go-to phrase that you say all the time, that clients hear you saying all the time? And there you go. You said it again. What's, what's, the, what's that phrase that you use all the time? <laughs> I think I say... I'm afraid I say cool a lot. I think I say cool a lot. Cool. That's better than awesome, because awesome is the one that is like, it's not awesome. I mean, it's awesome, <laughs> awesome <laughs> with awe, but, but, but cool, cool, yeah. cool. I'll go with cool. And uh, what's, what do you reckon, what, as many words as you want now, really, uh, what's your, 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 rec, your consistent recommendation to to a business owner or a business manager when you meet them, you meet them and they say they, whatever business they run, they run an accountancy, a law firm, a marketing firm, and they're talking about business. What's, what's the recommendation you make nearly all the time? Well, what's going wrong or what could go more right? Sometimes it is one big thing, right? Maybe you could, as the kids say today, pivot uh, and, and it would make a big difference. But a lot of times you're pretty much doing things right and then it becomes a lot of small things. Do you know how to apologize? Do you know how to listen? Is the beginning of each customer interaction good? Because that sticks in our brain a lot. Is the ending just a toss off or do you try to end it properly? There's a lot of little uh, hiring. Are you just hiring for technical skills, which we know can be important in certain uh, positions? Or are you also hiring for uh, pro-customer uh, personality traits? These things make a difference. So that's, that's, that's fascinating because that's stuff that, that we, kind of, we kind of know we should know, or we probably do know that we know, but somehow so many of us just don't have the attention to detail. Well, if that's a problem, I have arranged my book. So the end of every chapter 
has a little cheat sheet. It's like, uh, it's like uh, Cliff Notes, but it's called And Your Point Is, Micah. And so there, if you have short attention span, there's the ten, five or 10 points for the chapter. And so that's the one. You don't, have, you don't have an excuse anymore. Brilliant. That's fantastic. And at the end of the, the end of the show, the contact details and so on will be there. You can get it on Kindle. I know because I have it. So it's a um, uh, final question, I guess, really, is what's, what's, what's <laughs> next for you? What is next for you? Because this has been a, a brilliant conversation. It's been one of those things where you, you're going back saying, so let me just think about my business. Let me just think about how we onboard people. Let me just think about how we, 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 we deal with people in the middle, how we deal with them at the end. Um, let me just think about how we make people feel. So I've, I've loved the conversation, but, but what, what next for you? What, what more of the same, something different, small businesses, big businesses? Well, I work with almost any size business. Uh, one of the household names uh, worldwide, I believe, is the Museum of Modern Art. And working on this project was so much fun. So it was improving what they call the visitor experience. So they just underwent a nearly $500 million renovation and reimagining of the galleries at this iconic uh, museum in New York City where there's a uh, starry night and all these other unbelievable, unbelievable works of art. And someone who I think was very wise on staff thought, well, if, if we get the artwork better lighted and we have the explanations better, we get all that right, but our staff isn't trained or hasn't had refreshers in providing an ex excellent visitor experience one-on-one, -on -one, then it may not be as great as it could be. So they hired us for what I'm sure was just a rounding error of what they spent on everyone else, don't worry. It was not $500 million to work with us. And we worked on these finer points of customer service or what they called the visitor experience. So that was very exciting. But I never know what the next phone call is going to be. It, uh, it might be a bank wanting to be uh, the four seasons of banking. It might, it might be... Um, something in the service industry it might be in manufacturing so uh as this great old songwriter uh it wasn't it wasn't uh irving berlin but it was one of those old guys and someone said what comes first the music or the lyrics and he answered the phone call <laughs> that's a, a fantastic fantastic place to end uh, it has been an absolute... I think pleasure. it was Sammy Khan, I think. That's Sammy, Sammy Khan. Khan. My father yeah. adored Sammy. My father used to go on and on about Sammy Khan. <laughs> um, thank you so much for being a brilliant guest. It's been a long time coming, this interview. Uh, and it's been, it's been worth the wait. It's been great because uh, your, your approach is, is re refreshing, refreshing common sense, if that kind of makes sense. And, and everyone, it's like everyone knows what customer service should be, but we don't, we don't get around to putting it first. And you're just, you're just saying, you know, put it first and then everything else will fall around it. So that's been an absolute pleasure. So thank you very, very much for being an absolutely cool stroke. Awesome. Guest. <laughs> thank well, thank you, Robert. It's been epic. Brilliant. Cheers. Thank you very <laughs> Thanks. Much. Bye.